Hello everybody, this is Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek with yet another video on our old buddy, Justin Peters. The other day, JP did a video on the book of James, and he said this. James, a bondservant, now in the Greek, that is doulos. In other words, James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad. Greetings. The first thing that I would like to bring your attention to briefly before we get to the primary text is how James introduces himself. Notice what he says. He says, I am James, a doulos of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, slave of God. Now, this is, this, is very, um, this is very impactful, I think, and it's very noteworthy because James is the half-brother of Jesus. There are four different James mentioned in the New Testament. This James is the half-brother of Jesus. Notice how James refers to himself. He does not appeal to his familial relationship with Jesus. He doesn't try to buttress his stature by saying, I am James, the half-brother of Jesus. No, he says, I'm James the doulos, the slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Justin seems to think that there's a lot of good teaching to be found in James's greeting. Interesting. For those of you who've been watching my videos for a while, you might remember this clip from two and a half years ago. It is possible to over-spiritualize parts of the Bible. Okay, it's, it's possible to over-spiritualize parts of the Bible. And to take, take 3 John 2 as a blanket promise for guaranteed healing and guaranteed wealth is over-spiritualizing this verse. Basically, John is writing a letter to his friend Gaius. And John opens his letter in much the same way that you and I might open a letter that we write to one of our friends today. Basically, John's saying this, Dear Gaius, I hope that this finds you doing well. Friends, that's all in the world he's saying. This is just a common greeting to a letter. This is not a statement of theology. This is not a doctrinal statement. It's just a greeting to a letter. Well, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is inspired of God and is profitable for doctrine. That would include greetings. I've heard lots of expository preaching done on greetings in epistles. James's greeting says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. James was the brother of Jesus, and yet he didn't pull rank and identify himself that way. He found his identity in serving Jesus. Well, that's good teaching there, and it's teaching from a greeting in an epistle. So back then he was saying that there's no doctrine in the greeting to 3 John. It's just a formality, a greeting. But I raise the point that expository teachers have long used greetings in epistles for doctrine. Because, after all, all Scripture is profitable for doctrine, according to 2 Timothy 3.16. Well, it looks like JP's been watching my videos because now he's saying essentially the same thing. In this next clip, he says that Bethel Church believes in grave soaking. They believe that when a, one of their generals, one of their, like, whether it's Amy Simple McPherson or Catherine Kuhlman or Smith Wigglesworth, one of these charismatic generals, quote unquote, from days gone by, when they die, there's an anointing that resides on their bones and, and hence the, the, the grave. And if you go and lay on the tomb or lay on the grave, you can actually soak up this anointing from these dead people. While it's true that they have been accused of grave soaking, and apparently some of their students did something like this at some point, Bill Johnson is on record that they don't believe in grave soaking. Do you endorse, preach, teach, encourage the practice of going to the, the graves of deceased men and women of God to try to suck the anointing uh, out of the no. earth? Absolutely not. We don't, goodness, we don't talk to the dead. We don't look for impartation from the dead. We don't worship the dead. But I, I will go to, you know, I've gone to Charles Finney's gravesite, and I'll pray, God, do in our in our country what you did through him, and I'll I'll yes. use it as a as a point of faith. To I, I feel like we are supposed to honor. I don't know that you need to go to a gravesite, but um, but I I have gone. I've gone to Evan Roberts, and I've prayed there. God, do what you did in Wales. Do it again. Release it all over the earth. And so I, I use it as a you know as a point of reminder of how God uh, used somebody in the past 
uh, but not to receive from them. So, no, Bethel doesn't promote grave soaking. In the next clip, JP says that Bethel teaches that man is inherently good. Bethel Church actually will flat out teach you that man is inherently good. That man is inherently good. That's one of their staple teachings. This is based primarily on a clip of Bill Johnson's son, Eric, where he misspoke along these lines. There's a clip. I only heard the, the, the short part of it from Eric Johnson, at, I believe at, at Bethel, basically saying that human beings are born good as if there's no fall, as if we don't have a, a sinful nature, that we're fundamentally good. Now, it's just a limited clip. I didn't hear the whole message. But what, what do you believe about human nature outside of God's redemption? Oh, that's my son actually, that uh, Eric Johnson is my son. No, people are born with a sin nature, and we need forgiveness. We need deliverance. And he believes that. We all believe that. He he was just, he was emphasizing an approach to people where we honor the fact that people are made in God's image. It doesn't mean they don't have sin to repent of. It just, it changes our approach to people. You know, you see Paul, you know, most excellent Felix, you know, and statements like this where there would be this moment of honor and, uh, and that's all we're trying to do. So, no, they don't teach what J.P. claims they teach. They affirm the doctrine of original sin. And in this last clip, I crashed a Q&A session with J.P. and Andrew Rappaport, and they actually took one of my questions. Rod asks, I'd like to know Justin's source for Benny Hinn's conjuring up the ghost of Catherine Kuhlman. No, I'm yeah, Catherine. Can- Catherine Kuhlman was a, a faith healer in the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Uh, pretty well recognized. She was responsible for ending at least one marriage and um, manifestly unqualified to, to do what she was doing. Uh, false teacher. Benny Hinn, B- Catherine Kuhlman was Benny Hinn's model in ministry. They never met personally. <coughs> she died shortly before they were, I think, supposed to meet. So he we went can... to her. Uh, he went to her meetings, and if you look at old film of Catherine Kuhlman and watch Benny Hinn today, they're basically the same person. Catherine Kuhlman wore a white dress. He wears a white suit, uh, or used to anyway, up till recently. But uh, it's in his book. I believe it's. Uh, I believe that account, that story, is in Good so Morning he's... Holy Spirit. I okay, yeah, because he's asking for the source. Yeah, I think that. It's in my master's thesis that I wrote. It's been a long time, so I'm pretty sure it's Good Morning, Holy Spirit. I couldn't tell you the page number. I'd have to look it up. Now, I asked this based on a video JP did a few years ago where he said this. Necromancy is defined as the special mode of obtaining aid or knowledge by the conjuration of the dead. And Benny Hinn, on several occasions, readily admits that Catherine Kuhlman has been appearing to him visiting him to give him instruction and direction in his ministry. So JP says that he can't remember, but he thinks it was in his book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. So believe it or not, I ordered a copy of that book and Benny Hinn's book on Catherine Kuhlman, and I read both of them all the way through. There's nothing in either book about Catherine Kuhlman appearing to Benny Hinn to give him instructions for his ministry. So I'm still waiting for JP to provide some evidence to support that claim. I think I'm going to be waiting a long time. By the way, as I've stated before, I'm not a big fan of Benny Hinn. But I have to say that Good Morning Holy Spirit was actually a pretty good book. I never knew how much grief his Eastern Orthodox family gave him when he first got saved. His dad even got violent with him. The most controversial thing he said in that book was... Jesus could have sinned if he hadn't been sustained by the Holy Spirit. Well, allow me to provide a clip of John MacArthur's thoughts along these lines. If you want to see the perfection of the work of the Holy Spirit in us, look at the work that He did in the perfect man. According to Luke 4, He was sustained by the Holy Spirit in His temptation. So Johnny Mac says that Jesus was sustained in His temptation. Now, maybe I'm reading too much into that, but it seems to me that he was saying that Jesus could have sinned without the aid of the Holy Spirit. I mean, if he couldn't have sinned, would it have been a legitimate temptation? Or let me put it this way. If it was a legitimate temptation, 
that would mean that he could have sinned. And if he could have sinned, then that means John MacArthur agrees with Benny Hinn. So you can't condemn Benny Hinn for saying this without condemning one of his biggest critics. Some of his critics seem to think that Benny Hinn has always been holding these big production crusades and that it's all show and nobody ever really gets healed. Here's where a little critical thinking comes in handy. Would a faith healer attract a large following if he never got any results at all? The fact is, people do get healed from time to time in his meetings. A couple of well-known names are Ben Vereen and Evander Holyfield. Ben Vereen's leg was injured in an accident, and after prayer, he was able to move normally and even dance again. Evander Holyfield had to cancel a fight because of his heart condition. But after prayer, his heart was normal, and he resumed his boxing career. I'll link to these stories in the description. Here's a couple of clips of Benny's younger days. The first is from the Jesus Festival in Orlando, Florida in 1980, and the second is from Cali, Colombia in 1984. What was wrong with your hand? Broken bone inside there. They had to take a bone out of my hip, but I don't feel they have to do it anymore. Come here. Did you have pain? Yes, I had tremendous pain. When? Father's Day it happened. Did you have pain sitting there? Yes, I did. When did the pain go? The second I stood up and Jesus said you were healed. Stretch your head. Now you tell me if you feel anything. Any pain? No pain. I worship the name of the Lord. I give you grace. Give the Lord a great hand for that. my dear brother look what's happened to that lady here see how thick they are try to wear them you can you cannot see this but these are how many on the front can see these are thick see it can you see everything everything's plain and the pain's gone on my left eye you had pain in the left eye and you couldn't see <laughs> give the lord a great hand with you. Did you feel something come over you this morning? Sentiste que algo vino sobre ti esta mañana? Sentí algo muy extraño por mi cuerpo. Can you describe it? Puedes describirlo. Escalofrío, lloré. I cried. It was like a trembling and I was cold. Did you did you feel a shaking sensation? Sentiste como si te estuvieras eh, temblando? Sí. Yes. Well, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Ese es el poder del Espíritu Santo. Sí. Is there any pain right now? Is there any pain after broken pain? ¿Tienes dolor en este momento? No. Has the pain totally gone? ¿Se ha ido por completo el dolor? Se ha ido por completo. Respiro bien. Porque al respirar me dolía mucho acá. Give the Lord a great hand. Aleluya, un aplauso al Hallelujah. Señor. Aleluya. So whether you like the guy or not, the fact is he has seen some results over the years. He's the kind of person who isn't afraid to go out on a limb in order to see healing take place. But that same audacious personality often works against him, especially with his theology. So you have to weigh all of those factors when evaluating him. Chew on that a bit, and we'll see you next time.